Okay, we'll start with Rich Garcilla in Reading. Rich, go ahead. Thank you, Jeff. Good afternoon, James. Good afternoon. I, I just want to make sure everybody clear. We're not sold out yet, but we intend on being. So I want to make sure that everybody's clear on that. Sorry, Rich. How are you, buddy? Fabulous. How are you? Awesome. Did you just try to one-up me with the fabulous? Is fabulous higher than awesome? In the fourth quarter. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. What do you think the offense has had success late in the fourth quarter? Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't really describe that. I think, number one, I think you know, we've been able to kind of wear some people down. I think um, our guys have done a great job of having a sense of urgency when we've needed it most. Um, I think our defense has really given our offense some momentum um, and some juice the way they've been able to hang in there and, and keep us in games. So, you know, I, I, think, I think there's a lot of things that factor into it. Um, you know, but it's not like we're just waiting to the fourth quarter to call those plays. I think there's a lot of factors that go into it. James, uh, during the caravan, you had mentioned you keep a, a file with a running list of, of coaches that something happens you like on your staff. When did Bob first make an appearance, you know, in that folder on that list? And what did you see him that kind of made you uh, want to have him on your staff? You know, uh, Bob got recommended to me by somebody that I really trust and respect in the profession. Um, you know, and I got a chance to sit down with Bob, um, and it didn't take me long to realize that, that you know, he's got a really um, sharp mind when it comes to the game and understanding um, and his package. Um, you know, at the time, he was at William & Mary, and I think the one year, it wasn't, it wasn't the year we hired him, but it might have been the year before, I think they finished number one in every single category um, in that conference, which is hard to do. And um, you know, that, that spoke volumes to me. And then you know, I think the other thing is it's got to be a good fit. You know, it's not just the, 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 the scheme. You know, personality-wise, it's got to be a good fit. I think me and Bob complement each other very well. Um, I, think, I think those things are important. I think the staff that we've surrounded Bob with I think is important. Um, I'm a huge believer in fit and, and gut and things like that and chemistry. Um, and we have that. You know, we have that on the defense side of the ball. But Bob's a sharp guy. He works really hard at it. Uh, it's very important to him. He's a football guy. He's a football junkie. He's got his family and football. And, and they're the two things that he loves to do. You know, I think it's also interesting that he comes from a football family. His dad is a lawyer. Um, and his dad sends his son to Yale, and I don't think it was to be a, a football coach, but two of his sons are football coaches. His other son is the offensive coordinator at Purdue. And I think that's important. It's kind of like being a coach's kid. You, know, you grow up talking football and being around football your whole life. You're learning things that you don't even realize. And just like Bob. Bob goes for a Thanksgiving dinner at home, and him and his brother are talking football. And you know he's having discussions and bouncing ideas off people. Now, he can't do that anymore because we're in the same conference. But I, I think all those things are valuable. I, I really do. I think they go a long way. So. Uh, you know, Corey was asking a little bit about the Richards. And part of that, uh, Coa Farmer was a guy who I would guess was probably in the yellow category. Um, how has he been coming along in practice? And going along with that, we saw more Grant Haley, I think, than ever on Saturday. And was that by design, or was the snap count a little more than you anticipated with him? No, I, I think, like I said, you, I, I hope the snap count for all those guys continue to improve because then it was worthwhile in, 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 in burning the red shirt. Um, Koa, for example, you know, we think Koa's got a really, really bright future, but there's so many factors that go into it. I told you guys that before. It, it could be they're physically not ready. It could be they're mentally not ready. It could be they're emotionally not ready. Or it could be just experience. You know, just like every single day, we and I am gaining institutional knowledge and community knowledge. I'm learning more about this place every single day, which is going to help me do a better job in representing Penn State. Um, it's the same thing our players. Koa Farmer, for example, he was a great athlete in high school. They played tailback, you know. Um, so you're asking a guy who played tailback and safety to now play outside linebacker, and there's a transition. Some guys are able to make that transition pretty easily, and other guys, it just takes some time. And I think Cole is going to have a very bright future. He's doing great in school. He's got an awesome family, um, and he's a talented kid. And he wants to be. He wants to be really good. So I think Koa is going to end up having a great career here. Um, just today, 
he's not ready. Now, next week may be different. 